J. Steve Vance's words are more than just statements. They echo the heartbeats of countless Americans who cherish the values of freedom, responsibility, and national pride. His powerful defense of conservative ideals, particularly the sacred right to free speech, strikes a chord deep within those who feel their voices are being silenced. Uh, yesterday on America Decides, I'm with CBS News, by the way, uh, the UAW president said that Donald Trump and Elon Musk sneered at labor workers when uh, talking about how Elon Musk fired folks looking to organize. The Teamster president, who also spoke at the RNC, called this economic terrorism. What's your reaction to the backlash that Donald Trump's getting from that interview? Well, look, I, 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 I like the Teamsters president. I think he's a good guy, but I think he's wrong about this because Donald Trump was not talking about firing Michigan auto workers. He was talking about firing the employees of Twitter who use their power to censor American citizens. Those people ought to be fired. If you censor Americans from exercising their First Amendment rights, you absolutely should be fired. Donald Trump's exactly right. Now, what Donald Trump has also done more than, again, more than any president in my lifetime, again, 60,000 factories closed in the 60, 16 years before Trump became president. In just the four years that he was president, he reversed that trend and opened 12,000 factories. This is a guy who's fighting for American jobs. And my message to Sean Fain, who's the head of the UAW and stands up next to Kamala Harris and sounds like a communist is, trust me, I talk to a lot of UAW workers. They want a president who fights for their jobs. They want a president who will shut down this garbage at the border. They want a president who will stop sending American money to buy Chinese made cars. American money ought to make, ought to buy American cars. And UAW workers and non-union workers, we all believe in that message. That's why Donald J. Trump's gonna win Michigan and he's gonna win the whole industrial Midwest. And we'll do one more question. Vance's declaration that if you censor Americans from exercising their First Amendment rights, you should be fired, isn't just a statement. It's a rallying cry for those who see the suppression of speech as a grave injustice, a betrayal of the very essence of American democracy. In a time when private companies like X, formerly Twitter, wield immense power over public discourse, Vance's insistence on protecting free speech resonates as a call to arms. It's not just about words, it's about safeguarding the cornerstone of our freedom. And when Vance ties economic nationalism to the revival of American industry, pointing to the 12,000 factories that roared back to life during Donald Trump's presidency, he taps into a deep well of patriotism. It's a vision of America that stands tall and independent, no longer reliant on foreign goods especially those from China. Vance's stance that those who censor should be held accountable is more than just a political position. It's a reaffirmation of personal responsibility and identity. In a world where power is often unchecked, especially on social media, his call for accountability is a demand for justice, for a return to values that honor individual rights. But Vance doesn't stop there. His advocacy for American workers isn't just works. It's real leadership. By focusing on the tangible impacts of economic policies, like the reopening of factories, Vance shows he's in touch with the struggles of everyday Americans. He's not just talking, he's acting on the issues that matter most, proving that leadership is about more than just words. It's about action, grounded in the realities of people's lives. By shifting the conversation from abstract concepts like economic terrorism, to the concrete issues of free speech and job creation. Vance is reframing the debate in terms that resonate with the fears and hopes of ordinary citizens. He's not just playing on these fears. He's addressing them head on, positioning himself as a true representative of the average American. It's clear that Vance's message will deeply resonate with conservative audiences, especially those who feel their rights and livelihoods are under constant threat. His focus on free speech, job creation, and accountability for those in power speaks directly to the hearts of those who hold these values dear. And in a world that often feels like it's losing its way, Vance's words offer a beacon of hope, a reminder that there are still leaders who stand for what is right.